All right. Well, welcome back to another episode of Unlearn with us. I'm so excited to have my next guest. Uh, welcome, Tuan Nguyen. Thank you very much for having me, Rebecca. This is yes, awesome. Very excited. Uh, Tuan and I connected through the world of Facebook. Um, I think it was uh, somebody that I had in our social change makers program. Uh, her son was in the program and she connected us. And I've been so lucky uh, to have you as, uh, as a mentor, as a coach, as somebody who is so willing to give his time um, and support me in, in my journey and everything that I'm doing uh, to move towards opening up Rise Academy. So thank you so much for all of that. And I'm so excited uh, to chat education with you. Awesome. Well, honored to be here. And, uh, you know, I'm no expert, but uh, I am passionate about this space. So hopefully it's going to be some value for you guys. Yes, I know. You've got lots of really great insights. So, um, so I was doing, I mean, I, I had talked to you a few times before this and um, was doing a little bit of research and I've written down here, I've got Tuan, an entrepreneur, um, owner of Health Genie. Uh, you've done, I can't, I couldn't figure out, is it three TED Talks or are there more than that? Three, yeah, three, three? TEDx Talks. So we uh, have to always be specific, they're TEDx Talks, yeah. Okay, yes, TEDx Talks. Uh, you're the owner or organizer of, is it called Dude Buddha? Yes, it is called yes. Dude Buddha. Yes, yes it's an exciting love- online community. Yeah. So tell us, and I'm sure I've missed stuff. Um, I would love to hear sort of about you. Well, I I guess I'll, I'll, I'll try to position um, a little bit about me in relation to what we're talking about today. Yeah. Uh, So, you know, we're around education, family, children, you know, um, uh, we just want for the best for our kids. Right. And at the same time, I know how much fear we have inside at the same time, excitement and fear, all of that. So who I am in relation to all this is that um, I'm a father. I, I have, uh, I raised seven kids uh, uh, and six of them are kind of like my step, are my stepkids essentially. Um, and, um, and I have them pretty much full time for the last six years. It's been very, very exciting. I've been very fortunate to be able to work from home and spend a lot of time mixing homeschooling strategies with their traditional school, which has been really, really fun to do and a learning experience for all of us. Uh, and so how did I even get to the space? Uh, and it was actually completely done by accident prior to doing health genie and dude buddha and a few other initiatives i basically was in the tech world and online marketing i was one of the partners at a website in ottawa that people know it's called ottawakiosk.com from back in the day with craig dornboss and stephen lau and we took it to multiple verticals i took care of the health portal called health genie which is like a yellow pages online essentially it's an online directory and we spent about 10, 12 years doing it. We were very successful running it. And throughout my life, before even entrepreneurship, uh, my whole commitment was bettering the community. So I volunteered. I, as you can see behind me, I'm not sure if there's a video or audio only, but you'll see a few things. That thing there is a dream catcher, a handmade, uh, given by uh, our late Max Keeping. Um, that's my father there, right there, you know. And uh, so, uh, and even if I turn pan the camera a bit you'll see things from chio um, the united way and so i i'm really about trying to do what i can to better the community and the background is canada has helped canada helped my family come here in 1975 and so my parents always you know reminded reminded me to be grateful for what what this community has done for us and so that's been my life mission is to better the community in any way i can can do in my power and um and hopefully mobilize people to do it as well right so entrepreneurship is like great you know it's achievement based and yeah people could say i achieve these things it's why i don't i don't really talk much about achievements it's more like what's my life mission and whatever comes along the way i hope it helps me fulfill that mission and so how did, again, back to Dude Buddha, fatherhood, and all this thing come around? I went through a divorce, unfortunately, but fortunately, actually, it was a blessing. My ex and I have an incredible friendship still. It's great. It's uh, really nice. We had a six-year friendship before we dated, so I think we kind of fell back to that friendship really nicely. But when that happened, uh, there's a few things that hit my head. I thought to myself, first of all, I don't know how to make a relationship work, and uh, I had to admit to myself, 
you know, I did not have the tools and resources to really understand how to show up properly for myself and for my family. And so I took the, 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 the bold step and the brave step of reaching out and saying, uh, yeah, I, I've been looking really successful all these years and public speaking all over the world, but I feel really, really insecure. I feel really afraid of a lot of things. I'm afraid of what I, I, I'm going to teach my son. I don't know what to teach him. And so that led to reaching out to people all around me who I find are incredible and inspirational. And that created a bit of a movement called the Dude Buddha, which essentially is our men who own businesses, who are fathers, uh, and uh, they want to show up in the best way possible for their children, for their family, for themselves, but also develop the tools so they could still grow their business. The misconception is for you to grow your business, your family will suffer. And I think it's because we've never had the chance to share tools to help us stay connected to who we are and our family while growing our business. It's always one or the other. And it's, it's, it's going to change because of a large community of people who, who care about this. Right. And so as I started, you know, putting content out there just for fun, I'm not a YouTuber or anything of that stuff, but uh, a few of my posts did go viral and it created a following. And so I spend five hours a week, maybe just putting stuff out there. And uh, after four or five years, I now run a community. Uh, just again, it's all volunteer run. It's nonprofit. There's three dads that run this and uh, there's thousands of men in the group. And we share our biggest hacks as well as our biggest fears around um, being a parent and running a business. Part of that is, of course, is we're very intentional men and we want to be involved with our kids learning. And so that's how four or five years ago, I reached out to people who were homeschooling. I interviewed 200 homeschool families. I just want to learn how parents were, who were super intentional with their children, what did they do, right? While we are going to work, most people, and they send their kids to school and saying, you know what, I got to trust the system. I go make money. I take care of my family. And the school system is going to, you know, take care of my kids and teach them what they need to teach to succeed in life, right? But then I came across these incredible men and women uh, who are raising their family with a different type of approach, and I want to learn. And so in doing that, I think that's why I'm here with you, thankfully, is because um, uh, it's been such an incredible journey, and I'm so proud of where my kids have chosen to live their lives and where they continue to choose um, a, a higher version of themselves and to push themselves and things that matter to them. And, uh, and I think combining some of the philosophies I've learned with traditional school could be pretty epic, you know, for some, if not for all families, and especially where we're going now with education, it's so uncertain. Uh, and um, people are starting to realize what really matters to them and, uh, and also what's out of their control, what's in their control or what they've left in other people's control. Uh, that I do find there's a movement where people are being more intentional. Um, but the intention does come with a lot of fear, right? A lot of fear of the unknown. And so it's easy to go to back to the known when you're fearful. But if you face that fear up front and you learn what else is on the other side of fear, I think you could empower yourself with new tools and resources that make sense for you and your family and your children um, so everyone can flourish as a family. You know, so there you go. That's a bit about me and a bit about the philosophy in my journey. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Is there a is there a, a sister group? <laughs> uh, the well, there are many. I've yeah. I've been fortunate to speak to a lot of women groups the last you know three four years all over the U.S. Um, yeah. in Canada, not so much. It's 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 funny. I mean, content is is consumed so much in the U.S. that. That these tribes in the U.S. they're so strong, they're so powerful, right. and um, and they're willing to fly this little Canadian Ottawa lad, you know, down <laughs> to speak about our men's movement and yeah. what we've learned, uh, being more intentional as parents. Yeah, well, that's amazing. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to take you back a little bit. So okay, yeah, um, hit me. So I ask everybody to talk about their own educational experience. Mm -hmm. What was school like for you? Um. I excelled in school, so that's first, mm -hmm. right? Accomplishments based, right? Uh, yep. Achievement. Um, I grew up with, of course, immigrant parents who really came here for our future 
and who put their full um, faith into the system, right? So for me, school was, um, was, I mean, I learned everything, but I did feel, for me in particular, I did feel like I was trapped or had to cage a part of who I was. Uh, and it wasn't because of school. It's a combination of, of, um, of uh, you know, my parents not knowing what to do and, and encouraging me in a very particular direction, right? And, um, and then me not having the resources to look beyond uh, beyond school to find different ways for me to, to, to discover who I really am and, and amplify my superpowers, if you want to call it that, right? So, but, you know, everything else, of course, social, school, I played a lot of sports. You know, I, I loved every minute of the social side of school. On the academic side, you know, the, the amount of times I've asked myself, why do I have to learn these things? Why do I have to learn these things? And this is even pre-internet. Uh, my kids these days, uh, I mean, I'm going to bring my kids into this question, <laughs> but, you know, my kids, you know, they, they come home and they say, wow, like, I'm, we're just not inspired. We could just learn so much of this through the internet. We don't know why we're being tested on these things. We don't know why this is a, the kids are so they're so gutsy these days. They'll say anything, right? I don't know how this is a reflection of my intelligence. I hate feeling stupid because my grades don't work, but I know I'm smarter. Like, these are the things I hear from my kids now. But, but when I was growing up, I, I just felt that I felt trapped in a system and I just felt there was something more. And if you look behind there, there's a fedora and there's Michael Jackson right there. And I happened to have, you know, fall into the, the magical spell of the moonwalk and, uh, and even though I'm, I'm very good in the science world, I feel I'm an artist trapped in a scientist's body. And uh, it was only until I, I finished university, actually, that I had the, the courage to pursue things that, that felt would shine that inner child in me, right? So for some school, it might work great, but, uh, you know, you, you'll, I can never know. I can never know for others what it really could have done if it was slightly different. Yeah. Um, and same thing now. I feel the schools don't recognize my daughter's superpowers. I feel, I feel they're going to succeed in the system, um, but um, but they could be so much more of who they are. Not like you know. I believe we've caged ourselves over the years, and we're 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 just suppressing who we are as we get into the system. So I do everything possible to make sure my kids don't lose that that beauty that that they were born with, and yeah. I believe that's what's going to make them super successful and impactful with whatever they do. Yeah. Awesome. So kind of in that, so we're going to kind of look at you, you made mention to some of the things that are maybe not so great in the system, but what is, what is really good about our system right now? Um, I mean, I think the integrity of, of the intention of our teachers, I'll start with that. I won't go up to the political governance level because I don't have a lot of knowledge in there. But the teachers I meet have the intention of bettering the kids' lives. You know, they, they and, and I'm not going to point out specific teachers, of course, but, you know, there's always a frustration when you're in a big system. You know, teachers feel trapped, but they love the kids. They love to make a difference. And so it's like this, this kind of like fight within themselves. But I, what I like about the system is I so far have not had any bad experience with teachers, including my own. I felt they all genuinely do care. And, uh, and that alone um, makes learning more fun, at least, like when you feel loved, right? It's when you don't feel love is, is where it starts falling apart, right? And, um, you know, I, I also appreciate some kind of a structure. Uh, and I know in the beginning, kids do like a bit of structure so they could work with it and discover. Um, but, uh, but the flexibility and the adaptability is where as a system gets bigger, it, it lacks. Right. For sure. uh, but you know, I, I think the system there's, there's good and bad. And, uh, and in this case, you know, you know, they, they teach cool stuff. They still teach relevant stuff. And I find they're, they're adapting because I'm seeing what the kids are learning in high school now. And I think, wow, that's nice that they're teaching this. Some, some on financial literacy, some teachers are teaching that. Right. And, and some on personal development stuff like that's kind of nice. So again, it, it changes based on the teacher. Right. Yeah. And, and you, of course, I've heard about you and, and, and your incredible ways of, of trying to 
you know, be very creative with, with inspiring your kids and making sure they still learn what the school system wants them to learn, but yet in a different fashion or channel or approach, I think is incredible. Yeah. So, and I, thank you yeah. for that. Um, and it's definitely happening. I know that there are, are, I've spoken to a ton of teachers in our, in our system who, who want to see these changes happen, but it's exactly what you, like when you were talking about, you know, feeling trapped um, in a larger system and sort of torn as that teacher, you know, trying to make those changes, it can be, it can be tough. Um, so this might, might, might be a longer answer. Um, do you think that our current system is failing our youth at all? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, good question, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do think the system is too big to adapt to what's going on. Right. Um, I, and, and again, there's a political level to this, right. There's a whole political side that I don't have a lot of knowledge in, but from an outside perspective, you know, to see what they're learning and to see that even during COVID, which is what's happening during COVID I've exposed to my kids in terms of a learning style that helped them adapt to COVID pretty easily. And, um, and to see them self learn about what, most of the things available to the internet for them, right? We were doing physics and I said, oh, here, I found a great video. Watch this first. And if you can't figure it out, I'll help you out. She watched the video, boom, it was done. Like she figured it out, you know, and, and uh, so I think what's different is I, I don't think school system recognizes or they do, they might not know how to respond to it at the speed of information that we have now accessible to us you know i was there just at the beginning of the internet and that already was oh my goodness i'm wasting my time right i want to be challenged as a person i want to be challenged on things that that need to be created i want to be challenged on on understanding you know my superpower and how to apply it you know i want to, i want to be challenged in very different ways that that i think my parents or my my friends parents who grew up in canada were challenged which is like do your homework, do this, go to school, learn, get a job, right? And because of technology, I'm sure whoever is listening probably has heard this a thousand times, but it has created a whole new world of opportunity that we, even I'm in the technology world, cannot even comprehend fully. Like it's, it's moving so fast that I feel we need to allow kids to, to, to explore uh, more than ever than holding them down right? Um, yeah. Like math, math is very basic. You, it's never going to change, right? But how they learn math is changing, yeah. right? How we teach math at home is changing, has changed, right? I teach math a very, very different approach and I bring in science in a different approach. And uh, most of our schooling happens outside, right? And so, um, so it's, again, it's, um, I'm going to, I'm going to ramble on a little bit. So, you know, hopefully it's going to make sense. <laughs> yeah. I was asked how I taught my kids three languages in another podcast interview. And I said, I didn't teach my kids three languages. I gave them a tool that enabled them to do something. All right. So they love to be enabled to do things. They want to do things. Right. And so the more we can give them things, the more they can feel enabled quicker, the better. Right. And so my son would not, I would not respond to my son unless he told me what he wanted in Vietnamese. So now he realized that for me to get this, I have to speak Vietnamese. So then I learn it. It enables me to access what I want. Right. And, and so, so in our home, I, I know what matters to them. And another way of saying from adult language is your why, right. Is I know what my kids whys are, they've expressed it to me. And so how do we bring in math, science, English, all of that, even religion, all this other stuff that's out there, information's out there, and some of it needs to be learned in, in different ways, but how does that enable them to, to, to live their why, right? To enable them, yeah. right? And so what is wrong with our system? Well, I think our system is doing its best, but things are changing so fast that it's not just the education system. It's anything that's massively built in the last 20, 30 years or 40, 50 years have are, are struggling to adapt to, to it. And if that's happening at a big scale, that means our system, our education system has no idea what they're preparing their kids to be, to do, or whatever you want to say. Cause I don't like to say the like, news or do, yeah. right. It's like, 
it's impossible to even predict if the program is working or not because things are the output on the other end is changing so fast. Yeah. Right. Or maybe if you're on a circus, you know, the person who receives you when you're, you're being thrown, that person is changing at such a fast rate that we even know where the kids are going to land or who's going to catch them. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Um, that's think, exciting. Actually, that's what's exciting about it. Actually. I don't want it to be something scary, but the school system, in my opinion, is never going to go away, but we do have to be open to partnerships, perhaps collaborations, right? We do have to be open to testing new things now that have never been tested before and, and hopefully even trusting that our children will guide us actually to, to how our education system should evolve. Yeah. Student voice is, uh, is definitely lacking, I would say. Um, and you were also kind of, you were talking about the autonomy piece, right? When you are enabling your children, um, you're giving them that autonomy, which is also, in, in my opinion, as an educator, something that kids don't get very often, right? They don't get to have ownership over a whole lot of stuff. And that's a big motivator for a lot of kids, um, which is, is amazing. Um, Absolutely. Yep. I also uh, know, and just when you were talking about how quickly everything is changing, I, I actually have a friend who works for um, the federal government in the Canada school portion, which I didn't know existed until chatting with her. And uh, she had the opportunity to listen to a gentleman from, from the U.S. Um, his name is Gary Bowles. Are you familiar with him? No, it doesn't ring bell. Yeah, I can't remember the name. Uh, it's a, a school. Anyways, it was really cool. He started out his talk by showing uh, what school would be like in the year 2050. Maybe I can't remember if it was 30 or 50. Anyways, but it was this kid puts on this cap and he, uh, you know, has this crazy thing going on his head. And then he uh, meets up with someone virtually in a park and then they explore Egypt and they, uh, anyways, it was just really cool looking at like exactly what you're saying is that there's so many things evolving and progressing that uh, it's just, it, it's really hard for the system to keep up for anyone, mm -hmm. I guess, like you said, even you in the tech world. Yeah, my, my daughter who's now almost, she's turning 15 this year, you know, she's really into architecture and design and all that kind of stuff. And yeah she started learning a bit about cartography and all this kind of, you know, design architecture, you know, different, but just um, the Romanesque art to Baroque and, you know, all, you know, those eras, architectural eras. And what was interesting was that she said, um, you know, she, she's learning, if you want to learn more about this stuff, what are things you need to learn? And at this point we're talking about VR and uh, she's talking about, wow, you know, like, engineers do this and structural engineers do that. So she's starting to learn these things, right? And she says, I wish someone built a VR program where it all can just happen with an experience. And, like, and then I ask her, describe to me what that would look like. And she said, well, I would love to put on a pair of goggles. I would love to go to Germany. I would love to pick a corner that exists right now that's wide open and empty. And I'd like to the program to help me build a home right in there that actually can exist at the very corner. And the program tells me what structure is stable, what's not. Like if I put the angle this way, put the roof, I put certain bricks, they know the weight of the brick, they know how much load it's bearing, all that kind of stuff. And at the end, this program allows me to build an actual building just because I could think about it and it could actually be stable and, and be erected onto that very corner in Germany. Just, just that, if I could just do that, I'm going to get it. I kind of get it. Right. And I thought, wow, my daughter's brilliant. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like, we should do that. It's like Minecraft at the whole level. I was just going to say, well, <laughs> right? I just, you know what? It's interesting. And you should check out this organization called Block by Block. They do something similar. They go into third world countries and they take a space because a lot of these places don't have community spaces. And so they go in and they get, they train the community on how to use Minecraft. And then they work in these groups. And they design that area in Minecraft and then they build it. Um, they obviously get engineers and city planners and what have you involved. Um, but yeah, that's super, super cool. Yeah. All the possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. And the more we, I think what's hard for most parents is that, 
you know, I have an unfair advantage that I get to spend a lot of time with my kids. So, uh, but because of that, though, I can offer to my friends some, you know, hacks, if you want, that's a big term the last, what, 10 years now, mm-hmm. is like a hack to, to if you only have 10 minutes with your kids, what, what are some of the best questions to ask them to create yeah. that connection and drive inspiration and, and, and promote creation and storytelling, right? All of that stuff so that way we could see how our kids' mind works. So we could see what's really special about them. Yeah. You know, if coming home saying, how was school? Did you get your straight A's? Did you finish your homework? Right. You don't get to know your kids like that. There's no way you're going mm-hmm. to, you're just getting to know if your kids can adapt to a system or not. Yeah. Right. And so, so at home, you know, we, we almost pulled the kids out of school, but I do recognize a traditional school has value. Mm-hmm. And so I wouldn't pull my kids out of school completely, but instead I, I, I give them permission to tell me when they want some days off as long as they replace it with something that's going to help them grow. Right. And we write a note to the teacher and then we, we, I, cause they're older now, they could build their own learning experience. Right. But for my son, who's eight years old, you know, I, I, I make sure that he does his things at school, but when we come home, it's, we, we build a different type of learning experience. Right. Yeah. And so I, I believe that marrying that with what school has to offer is what I can do now. That's the best thing I can do now from yeah. what I know, right? For sure. And, uh, and so, or like I tell my other friends, I don't know if I'll be a good dad. Well, I'll tell you in 20 years if I was a good dad <laughs> or not, right? It's like, there's like 20, you're such a good dad. You're so involved. I'm like, yeah. bro, I have no idea if this is working. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's like, sure. I'll let you know in 20 years. <laughs> I think generally speaking, if you take an interest in your kid's life, uh, you're, you're doing the right thing, which is amazing. Agreed, agreed. <laughs> um, all right, so we need some changes in education. Um, oftentimes, you know, the system is a barrier, but also society is a a barrier. Um, just because we often, you know, I'm sure when you're talking to people about education and sort and your philosophy, people are just kind of like, but Tuan, like, this is what school is. You know, if your kids are not, you know, doing everything that they should be in school, like what do people our, our society in general, what do they need to unlearn in order for us to move forward? Yeah, uh, that's a good question, by the way. <laughs> it's, it's a very good question. Uh, what do they need to learn? Jeez, it's like unlearn or, or learn. I think yeah. it's a bit of both, right? Yeah. Um, I think what, first of all, I agree with you that it's, the problem isn't just the education system. It's, it's the society as a whole. Right, our whole society is used to the system, so that's that's we think within that that paradigm, yeah. right? I think what what families and and individuals should consider unlearning at least is that everything we've been doing is wrong now, just as a challenge. I like to do as a thought experiment, kind of thinking in the middle is not good enough. It's like, what if what we're doing right now is totally wrong? Well, why would we think that? Well, let's just see how the world has changed in the last 10 years. That level of drastic change means that opportunities are transforming. There's a big campaign around the world, like in the US saying like there's 2 million truck drivers that in about five years will be limited in jobs because of self-driving trucks, right? right? Like there's the littlest things, even right now as we watched COVID-19 and people are stuck at home and people are coming with different solutions. I mean, the retail, the service, the small businesses, uh, some of them are suffering really badly. Many are, but new opportunities are coming in. We see all these technology people coming in and trying to solve efficiency to improve, uh, you know, profitability, you know, but that's a job, right? We look at government right now and I'm being slammed by my friends who work in jobs in an office because now they're working at home and they're asking me, how the heck do I, you know, maintain my schedule while being at home with my kids. How do you do this? How do you stay focused? How do you manage your time? Right. And I tell them, well, I actually manage my time on a 24 hour clock. It's not a nine to five. Right. I, I just get things done within the time I'm awake and, and I manage it differently. And it's like, Oh, well, I never thought about that. Right. This is how I set up my office. I specifically do this because it allows me to do certain things. So I think, I think I don't even have to ask people to unlearn anymore. It's almost like everything happened for this particular reason, which is we're now on lockdown and we all get a chance to unlearn. Yeah. And we're all in the unlearning process right now. Whatever people are experiencing right now that's causing anxiety, that is the unlearning process we're all going through right now. 
Yeah. So, uh, so if you're feeling that whoever's listening and watching, <laughs> you know, there's, these are some signs that for us, it's, it's an opportunity to say, if we figure this out, it's going to be a whole new world for our kids. Yeah. Right? We can't let our kids figure this part out. We have to be the ones figuring it out. Right. And, and education in particular has to figure it out and, and they need to express to the parents that it worked back in the day, but now things are a little bit different. You know, things are changing so fast that it requires a community to educate our children, not just the school system. Right now, because of what's happening outside, what parents and families need to also know is that when, because the amount of information we're exposed to, we now see endless amount of possibilities, not of what we can do, but who we can be. Mm -hmm. That's why I don't, I never tell my kids, what do you want to do for a living? Right. I would say, what's important to you? What problems matter to you? And which of these problems do you want to spend time contributing to the solution? And let's, let's find what you're good at in terms of your superpower. And then how do you apply that superpower to make an impact in the area that matters to you versus who do you, what do you want to do for a living? What role do you want to, do you want to be an architect? Do you want to be a doctor? That, that is not the conversation we have because kids more and more are just seeing so many possible versions of themselves. Right. And, and, and if you even look at just consumers in general, personalization is more and more important for even all of us. Like when we buy a car, I mean, back in the day, features for a car was like minimal. Now it's like even like little Honda Civic has a thousand features for you to personalize, to pick. Like us as consumers demand personalization. How can we not provide that to our kids, right? The fact that we demand personalization comes from this childlike curiosity and enjoyment of life that we have. And I think that's what we need to also unlearn and relearn is that, is that kids want this level of individuality. And, and when you homogenize things, we squash individually out, we squash what's unique about each of them out. And some of them make it through as the shining individuals that they are. But I would wager that most don't end up becoming exactly who they are who they feel they truly are inside, but they're happy that their jobs. Maybe they're, they're making great money. They're taking their families. They get to go canoeing. And so that feels great. Right. But, but I would wager that the system does squash what's what we want as individuals is like this personalized, unique feeling that we are special. Right. And so, so, I mean, this is all, again, I'm doing a very big picture response to this because yeah. I used to think like specifically, what can we do? What can we unlearn? But now that I'm seeing global impact over the last five years and where things are changing, uh, I don't like to say our education system is broken. I like to say that everywhere has been going a certain pace the last 50 years and it was working, but it's working less and less. And either we wait till it slaps us in the face where brain drain happens to another place where maybe they're doing a better job than our country, perhaps, right? Or, or you know, just economic prosperity is completely gone because we're just not prepared to do the work. We don't have, the, we don't have what it takes to, to grow our community and take care of each other, right? And yeah. so I think it's, none of this happened on purpose, but I do feel that it's a big problem and, and, and it's an opportunity that we can can individually solve right and to our best and then see what floats up at the end of it, what sticks to the wall. And I'll give you a, a very concrete example. Uh, I am building something called word hero with a friends of mine, a couple of friends of mine, one's a teacher and one's a, a buddy of another buddy entrepreneur. And we literacy matters to us. We, we reading matters to us. So, so what are we going to offer to parents? So I asked parents, what's your biggest issue with, with books with your kids? And they said, well, first things first, we don't know where to start. Like we don't even know how to read books with our kids. We don't know how to make it interesting for them. All they want to do is grab Pokemon and, and all these other books. And, and, and I also want them to read something more beneficial for them to help them understand the world around them. So I said, okay, well, did you know that there's 200 of the most popular books? It can be leveraged three different ways within two weeks. So parents are like, well, like for example, what? Well, the places you go from Dr. Seuss, 
is an example. It's a very well-known book. But that book can be leveraged three different ways by parents just by asking two different questions every three nights. So you have six questions over, six we over two weeks. You could ask these different questions to draw out empathy, to draw out storytelling, to draw out even things like he, she, pronouns, colors. There's, there's different ways to take a very simple book, but parents were never equipped with this. Parents were never equipped with how to connect with their kids over a book, mm -hmm. right? And perfect timing. COVID's happening. Parents are getting more concerned about literacy, math literacy, you know, your basic, I guess, things that people learn, that kids learn. Mm -hmm. And so, so we're building a YouTube channel where, uh, you know, Miss Kate McDougall, she's going to go through 200 books of the most well-known books for different grades. And she's just going to teach parents how to take these books and connect with their kids just by simply asking good questions. That's amazing. Right. But she's playing her part. It mattered yep. to her. And she's still teaching in the system. She's still doing her best to, to make the impact within the constraints she has that's out of control. But yep. what's in her control? What's in your control? What's in my control? Mm -hmm. Well, in her control, her superpower loves reading, super creative, super bubbly, loves books. And, and so she's going to take this and offer it to the world because no one else is doing it. Right? Awesome. So that's within her control. And so yeah. I think we all have this, uh, you know, and we can contrib contribute to this and, and support each other as, as a community to improve how kids are learning. I'm not going to use the word education, but how kids are learning. Yeah, that's amazing. Well, our last question before we can tell people where to find you if they want to learn more about all the amazing things that you're doing. Um, it's really interesting because you use this word probably a, about 100 times in, in, the, uh, in the interview here. Um, my my group that i'm working with right now this, in the social change makers we do a podcast and uh, we ask all of our guests uh what their superpowers are because we want to focus on our strengths and our brilliance so what is what is your superpower uh i think if i believe in something then i have the ability to inspire motivate and mobilize people who believe in the same vision to move together as a community. So I think that's, that's how I've been described <laughs> yeah, to yeah. myself. Yeah. So I, cool. I can inspire and mobilize people and move forward in a particular direction so we can make an impact as a community rather than just as individuals. Yes. And I can, I can definitely uh, agree with that because you've been by my side. Uh, you know, we haven't even, we haven't even met in person. We've only <laughs> met over, uh, over zoom. Um, but I really feel like you, uh, go out of your way to make people feel good about who they are and support them. And I know you keep saying you want to put Ottawa on the map and if you can make Ottawa a better place then uh, then you've done your job. So I, I thank you for that, uh, so much. Um, well, thank you for the opportunity as always. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so if people uh, want to learn more, especially about the YouTube, I don't know if you've got that up and running yet or. Um, so we're they've... recording the videos right now, okay. uh, but it will be called the word hero uh, show. Uh, okay. Word hero something, but it's word hero. And, word, and the word website hero. will be wordhero.club. Not live yet, by the way, okay. but uh, it's something like I said, we're working on the side and then awesome. we're going to have the word hero podcast too. So oh, it's fun. Um, yeah. That's it's awesome. just something we want to do to help others. So yeah. Be awesome. Amazing. Um, thank you. Yeah. And, yeah. A, and anywhere else that people could find you if they want, what if there is a working dad out there that wanted to. Yeah. You could go to do Buddha.com. That's D U D E and Buddha is B U D D H A.com. So do yeah. Buddha.com yeah. or health genie.ca. So there's a, there's a contact form or my emails there. You could just hit me up there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking uh, time away from your busy day and your children and uh, talking education with me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And I appreciate you as well. Much love to you and everyone's families.